We have uh, Mr. Sunil Goyal, Deputy Chief Executive Officer at Sopra Steria India, with us here today, and he would be our keynote speaker for the topic of evolving workplaces. Sunil Goyal is currently Deputy Chief Executive Officer. He is responsible for all the functions, including software delivery, human resources. IT, finance, and administration. It has several centers across Noida, Chennai, Pune, Pune, and Bangalore, with an employee strength of more than 6,000 people, and his passion is people. He earlier co founded Momentum India with almost nil seed capital in 1993, along with his co founder, the company grew from 2 to 40 in 5 years and it is today one of the largest channel sales partners for Wipro Infotech for their IT products across India. He was instrumental in diversifying into software services business and subsequently raising 1.5 million USD funding from Citibank. Earlier on in his career, he was in the channel sales himself for the team Wipro from 1991 to 1993. He started his career as a support engineer in UB's communications division 1989. So from engineer to sales to an entrepreneur and handling all the departments. I have great pleasure in inviting Mr. Sunil Goyal on the stage. Thank you very much, ma'am, for the long introduction. Very, very good evening to all of you. I don't see any energy in the room. Very, very good evening to all of you. Good yeah, that's it. I think JCS is always full of energy. Just two things before I start. Uh, one is I know I'm quite underdressed today because I see a lot of people in jackets and tie. It's not because I want to look cool or younger. It's just because I have a bit of... No, it's not for you. <laughs> it's just because I have some ankle injury, so I had no choice other than just wearing uh, sports shoes. And trousers on sports shoes would have looked uh, very challenging. Because Mahesh Sharmaji was talking about his age. So I'm as old as him or slightly younger. The second thing is, yesterday, you know, I was hearing a short video which many of you might have seen it. So there was this conference where Mr. N. Chandrasekhar, the chairman of Tata Group, he was speaking. And they had uh, Ranveer Singh in the audience. And the question which Ranveer Singh asked uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, and I have a lot of respect for him. He's a great professional, I think. A lot of uh, growth for TCS as well as Tata Sons goes to him. So the question he asks is that you know you have so much of experience. What is one piece of advice you give it to us for time management? And the answer Chandrasekhar sir gave was tension ni lene ka gyan nahi dene ka. And that's what I was realizing that I'm standing here in front of you trying to give you all gyan, which I think you all already have. So and secondly, I also know that I'm standing between the more exciting activities which is there after this. And also the previous speaker, obviously I can't match him, he's a great personality. So I think I'll take 10-15 minutes to just try to sum up my experiences. Obviously the last two and a half years has been extremely tough. And if I look back, if there are two businesses or divisions which have uh, brought us here after two and a half years, I think it's all the members which are sitting here, GSCS group, which is consists of everyone from all the corporate services, so definitely you can have a big pat on your back because definitely calls for a celebration there. And the second is, I think, the IT department. Because if these two were not there, I don't think so we would have been able to reach this situation. Also, I think for supporting IT, the core was GACS behind it. The whole theme of admin and infrastructure professionals because otherwise to maintain the data centers. I mean, when all this pandemic struck, within five, 10 days, we all had to move to remote working, uh, where people were managing 500,000, 100,000 square feet, I mean huge spaces. From there, the sizes came down. 
Uh, the way the businesses were being managed completely changed. We were couriering assets to people. Uh, travel came down to zero. Transport came down to zero. How to manage those vendors? So I think uh, when we think back, there were there's so many things where at a drop of a pin we had to change the way we are working. Uh, yes, people were working in remotely. They were there at homes. But one department which did not get an opportunity to work from home was actually the whole, I would say, infrastructure provisions because they had to ensure that the facilities are running, the data center is running, and if anything is required by a person, developer at home, especially the IT industry, it's available to them. So thank you very, very much, I think, on behalf of all the CXO community, I would say that you all have ensured because all industries came down during this period. The only industry which grew actually from 2020 to 2022 is the IT industry. And credit goes to all of you to have it made happy. Even during the second wave, which Dr. Maheshama spoke about, which was really, really very, very tragic. I think one department again, which came forward, I, I know I'm also part of the GACS WhatsApp group. And the way the community came forward to support each and every person. I mean, I was saying that even if there was, if the person knew that he cannot arrange an oxygen cylinder or a bed or whatever it is or medicines, but the way the whole group came forward to, you know, uh, give their shoulder to the other person, uh, tried his level best in some cases, they succeeded, some not. But I think that is the strength of this whole community, which I see where I think if you have any problem, just get to the group, talk to them, and the solution is there. So I think a whole round of, a big round of applause for all of you. I think definitely, thank you very much. It's, it's uh, today where we have traveled this two and a half years. It would not have been possible without your support. Just very quickly now going forward to what's the new normal. In fact, when this pandemic happened in 2020 March, I think we had a lot of people who started talking about what is new normal. And I was also part of a lot of uh, these conferences, talks, obviously we were doing all virtually. And there were a lot of discussions. And as you all know, pandemic happens only once in 100 years. And none of us had experienced it and hopefully none of us will experience it again. So I think a lot of things which were coming was, yes, this, that, and a lot of conjectures which were there. Obviously now I think, I personally believe the pandemic is behind us. Uh, for the last four months I have traveled across North America, Europe, all across India actually to all my centers. And I think yes, the things are coming back to the normal as far as business is concerned. When we look at the IT industry, I mean Infosys is talking about 14, 16% growth. So double digit growth which had gone out from the industry is back again. But in this, what is the future of work? And to be honest with you, if I tell you what is future of work, I would be lying. Because I don't think so anyone can predict what it is going to be. The only thing which we can guess today is what it can be, try to make that. But I think as we have in software development, we talk about agile processes. Whereas you do something, see whether it fails or succeeds. If it fails, you learn very quickly, then you turn around, do something else, try that out and then change. In the last couple of months, I've been reading a lot of reports, whether it's from McKinsey's, BCG, a lot of uh, surveys, also talking to a lot of CXOs, a lot of uh, HR heads, uh, admin heads, etc. that what do they think that what's going to be the future. Obviously, there are two extremes. One is, unfortunately, yes, a lot of people have got used to working in their night suits and pajamas. They get up in the morning and they start coding. Uh, and obviously, now it is becoming difficult to get back to, uh, to offices, especially in the IT and consulting industries. Uh, manufacturing, obviously everyone is back to office and still there is a lot of discussion and debate upon that what is going to be the future. Now, almost a year, year and a half back when I started thinking about it, I, I think I was very clear that it is never going to be 100% remote. It will never be. Uh, just to mention to you all, a couple of years back there was a large study done by Harvard Business School and from that they found out that one of the other pandemics before the COVID, the biggest pandemic which was hitting this world is loneliness. I don't know if you are aware, UK has a minister of loneliness, UAE has a minister of loneliness and there are one or two more countries which has that. 
obviously when COVID stuck and that's become the bigger pandemic. And if you have 100% remote, then this whole loneliness issue is only going to get bigger. Because when you come to office, there is an issue, there is something with your colleague or a manager or whatever it is. You have your colleagues, your friends too, where you can vent out, speak to them, talk to them. Or you have a problem at home, you come here, talk to your friends. In fact, that's a solution which was one of the solutions which was given in this report was that yes, families in the Western world are getting smaller. They are getting more and more nuclear. So even there is no family support as we have in India. So they said that yes, office colleagues can possibly replace this part which the families were playing to help them to come out of this loneliness. So I personally believe that definitely a 100% remote or a virtual working will not be there. The second thing is, is it going to be 100% in office? Now again for specifically IT industry and consulting because there are manufacturing and other industries where you don't have a choice. You cannot have a pilot flying a plane from his home or you cannot have a train driver fly, you know, driving a train from his home. So all these functions and many others, you have to come to the floor or wherever the work is. But for these two industries, it will never be 100% from office. So that is where I think the concept which came out was hybrid. Now, as a concept, it sounds fine, but what is this hybrid space is going to be? And this is again evolving a lot. Uh, there are people, there are companies, I'm sure, within this uh, audience we may have consultants because very quickly, even the infrastructure industry is trying to understand how the hybrid is going to work. Now, in terms of the ratios, what it is going to be and not going to be, I really don't know. But what people say today is, especially in the IT industry, obviously it also depends upon the age group. So age group below 30, they're saying we want 100% from home. Age group above 50 actually are keen to come back to office. Age group between 30 to 50 somewhere, they will do what they're being told, but obviously the choice is to have that flexibility. The second is, when surveys have been done, only 15% of the people have said we want to work 100% from home. 7 to 8 percent of people have said we want to work from office. So the large chunk of people have said that we want it to be some days at office and some days at home. Now the biggest challenge which lies is then how do you design your workplace for that? How do you design the policies? Obviously the policies would be designed by the leadership and the HR teams. And what are the issues to be taken care of there? So my own belief is what is good, where it is going to stabilize for the entire workforce except for there may be very few companies because I think you all must have already seen in the news whether it is Google, they have already asked their employees to come back for two to three days. Apple has made it compulsory for three days. This I am talking about global companies. Adobe has already asked their people to come for two days. ZS Associates have asked them to come for three days, etc, etc. I think I believe some of the tier one companies, though they may not have sent a formal communication but they are asking their managers to be in office for four to five days and they are asking their people to start coming. So I think within the next two, three months, we will see a big change. But the challenge is, how do you design this workplace and what, as we say, the new normal is going to be. Because people like me who have been used to coming to office every day, managing people on the floor, I think they have to also adapt and change, change to it. So there are two aspects of it. One is how the workplace is going to look like. So definitely the workplace will have to change we will need to have a lot of these spaces which are informal spaces where a person gets a feel of whether it is his home or a restaurant or whatever it is where they can come and discuss and collaborate etc. Because today we had only meeting rooms and some huddle spaces and obviously it was all workstations. We may need to have a lot of these individual workstations which are uh, you know this long standing workstations etc. where a person can just go and work. Uh, so, that is one and secondly obviously there is when I talk about hybrid means there are some people in office and some at home or wherever they are working from. So how do you ensure that you don't have that unconscious bias of the person who is not physically present, he feels left out. Because if he feels left out then there is a problem. We already had a lot of other unconscious biases but if we are going to have this bias then it's also going to be difficult. So all the video conferencing rooms or the collaborative rooms you are designing We'll have to do it in a way where a person, whether he is remote or whether he is physically present, they feel as if they are discussing the same room. 
obviously we have the teams and zooms and all this stuff which has come in so i think there will be uh, there is already a lot of uh, research which is being done i actually heard the video of steel case md they have created a experience center in gurgaon and i'm sure other vendors are also doing it but this will definitely evolve over a period of time how it should be the second part is from your function what changes earlier we were sure that how many people require transport in a hybrid how do you plan for that do i have an answer no i don't have an answer so i think these are things where the community will need to get together talk about it that how do we do it what do we do it how do we make it flexible how do we allow people uh, you know one day he wants to come and he says no next day i'm not going to come because one of the things this is my personal belief i'm not saying that this is sopra stereo philosophy is within this hybrid the what people are looking for is flexibility they are not looking for that i have a policy which is very define this 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 no what people want is leave it to me let me decide when to come to office not to come to office i may come to office for zero days in a week and next week you know i come for five days but for sure designing a policy like that is not going to be easy for leaders like us so somewhere we will start putting in so how do we bring in a flexibility is going to be a challenge and also from like i just spoke about transport but take another factor earlier we were used to in most of the consulting and it companies and everywhere having this big food courts having multiple vendors providing food and we gave in the numbers how do you do that in a hybrid model i mean today i have like we started uh, in a informal way started calling people to office but formally we are going to do it from 1st of jan uh, one day the vendor has 400 people to whom he has to cater and the second day he has to cater to 30 people now to this 30 people if they don't get the right experience or the 400 people they don't get the right experience then calling people to office is going to be even more difficult the second thing which is also there which leaders like need to understand that today when i am trying to call back people to office what is that he is going to look forward to it can't be just a dull office where a person comes does his meeting on teams and goes back because if it is going to be like that then there will be no motivation for him to come to office or travel that x distance so i think there is there is lot of lot of lot of work which has to go into in terms of designing the workplace lot of thought process which will need to go in term, terms of how do i have the new policies the new structure getting flexibility there is not going to be easy because as leaders we want to it to be defined so that people can be measured people you know you have that discipline etc but yes the younger workforce is looking for a lot more flexibility and the third thing which obviously the younger generation is now talking a lot about it i know that because i have a daughter who's 30 and my son is 25 where they are actually asking for what is the purpose of the my work why am i coming to office for work what is this company doing etc and with this pandemic having now obviously behind us but i think the question on this purpose is becoming even bigger so whether the corporates in their workplace can provide that purpose how they do it that also has to be seen so just very quick thoughts i thought i will share from what i have read what i have experienced what i am experiencing right now but i am sure with uh, collaborative effort from everyone at gcs uh, hopefully we should be able to come out with something which is long term sustainable because hybrid is there to stay 100% remote it will be there for few cases but definitely is not sustainable i mean elon musk has already said that 100% of the workforce has to be in office otherwise you can leave the company i also know of some founders who are running companies of 800 to 1000 people size they said all the people who have less than 4 year experience they need to come to office for all 5 days otherwise there is no way they can learn and grow there was attrition and left so that's where i just wanted to share my thoughts uh, thank you samir for inviting me here thank you to the whole gss community again i want to tell last two and a half years were extremely tough but you all made it easy possible for navigating these tough times for leaders like us so thank you very much and a big round of applause for you all and success thank you